So how do I create a virtual Korean American studies museum? This past weekend, I had a chance to attend California Council for the Social Studies Conference. And it was an amazing conference uh, I presented there. Uh, my topic was ethno ethnography, how to help students know and tell their stories. And in addition to presenting, I actually had a chance to visit many uh, different workshops as well. And one of my favorite was 20 museum tips for social studies classrooms presented by the Reagan Academy. There's a great group of four speakers and one of the speakers came out. Her name was Colleen Hill. She gave me her card and she's the manager of school programs there. And so Colleen, thank you so much for that presentation, giving me your card and the opportunity to talk about 20 museum tips for social studies classrooms. So now I'm thinking about this, not for my physical classroom, but for my virtual classroom that I'm wanting to create. I have a driving question, which is how will we create a virtual exhibit at the Smithsonian, or maybe we could say Reagan Academy, to tell the story of Korean Americans that culturally honors the contributions of Korean Americans to the United States of America. Now I'm giving the example of um, Korean Americans for the purpose of this video, but it could be Asian Americans, it could be other ethnic groups as well. I am thinking about this for the ethnic studies classes, where students are the ones that are creating this virtual museum. I mean, it's so exciting. Have you ever stepped into a museum? It's like stepping into a different world. You hear stories of the past and it echoes to today. And so uh, just giving the students, I think, the opportunity to create a museum or a virtual museum, I think, is exciting. And so as I did this, I was really pleased that Reagan Academy gave 20 practical tips on how to make this happen or how to enhance the experience as they also do at the um, Reagan Library. So if you haven't been to the Reagan Library, by the way, I highly recommend it. Air Force One is there. It's totally awesome. And that begins uh, with uh, tip number one place-based learning, the power of a place. So uh, imagine uh, the Korean American Studies class, uh, a place that is important and um, guiding uh, folks through that place and having that place in the virtual museum. Tip number two, documents. Significant documents that were important to Korean Americans and making sure that's a part of this virtual library as well. And once again, when I say Korean Americans, uh, it could be Asian Americans, it could be other, any other ethnic group. Um, so I'm just using Korean Americans as an example. Tip number three, storytelling. Uh, so within your virtual museum, not just like telling the facts, no one wants to just hear the facts, but connecting with your audience in an emotional way. So we're thinking of ways, how can you tell your story and connect with everyone in an emotional way. Um, the making of actual exhibits. So if you can imagine creating digital spaces where you put in artifacts, uh, artifacts that you think are important that people should know about and why it has significance. And maybe um, there's gonna be an event where there's gonna be a museum opening or a reception or an exhibit opening. Uh, that could be like how each, I don't know, team Let's say they have different topics or different artifacts, artifacts uh, presents their um, um, material by having a reception or a museum opening. That'd be pretty cool. Tip number five, uh, curating a museum exhibit. So each group might be in charge of a particular exhibit, Korean American exhibit, let's say, and then they become the docents or the experts or the guides or the interpreters for the various people that would come in. So as I think about uh, this virtual space, I'm wondering if in the future, uh, this could be an opportunity to guide um, other classes through. So if, you have, if I'm teaching a Korean American studies class, uh, then um, guiding other classes, other interested classes, students uh, at that high school or other high schools through this virtual museum where the students are the docents. It's not the teacher that is teaching, but the student and the teachers maybe just the facilitator guide on the side, but it's the students who are leading uh, the folks through uh, the museum. Uh, it could also be elementary school students for that matter. Uh, we can invite elementary schools or we can even move up and invite parents to be a part of this as well or community members. Because when it comes to um, topics like, uh, let's say Korean Americans, uh, you know, uh, if I asked you to share about one significant Korean American that has impacted the United States of America, 
um, there might not be a person that comes to our mind offhand. Uh, and I just want to let you know, hey, I felt the same way. And that's okay because um, th these were things that maybe we didn't have the opportunity to learn. But I'm so excited that our students will have the chance to learn these things, curate things, these things, be docents. Um, if you've seen my Ed Family YouTube channel and my ethnography uh, YouTubes, I talk a lot about students knowing their story, being able to tell their story to listen with empathy and respect, and then to do something good with their story. And so I could see this museum uh, project as allowing them to do uh, these things. Uh, strategies, they talked about the five senses uh, at this presentation. So sometimes when we think about going on a tour, maybe we're thinking with our eyes, but might there be other ways that we can experience something? So what, other, what are some other ways to experience and exhibit? What are some different strategies that could be used or teaching strategies that could be used for that matter? Uh, inclusivity. So inclusivity is just that you are welcome. So when we come into this virtual space that you create, uh, students, are, are we making our guests welcome? Are they, are we guiding them? Are we, we are the, we are the, um, the guests are coming into our home in the museum. We are the hosts, the hosts that are guiding uh, the guests. They're coming to our house and we are treating them like very honored guests. Let's move on to tip number eight, uh, using uh, technology. And so maybe uh, we'll be integrating technology by putting in like, you know, maybe it's like uh, technological ga games, links, uh, maybe uh, captioning uh, in YouTube. That was an example that they gave. Maybe uh, we're gonna be using our plural lingual ability uh, I know some of you are experts in different languages and maybe there's some communities that if you uh, translated it into different uh, language and we added that piece of technology in where they could hear it in both English and another language, perhaps that could be a really powerful experience as well. So using technology to enhance learning. Number nine, uh, inquiry uh, base. So really creating that curiosity uh, among the students. So what, how can we make each, not like, Oh, this is what you're going to learn but how can we make it super curious and have it be student-led as well and then who doesn't love a good game uh and having some healthy competition and the competition can be like it could actually be like a game right but it could also be just as simple as an the example they gave was who can give the best newscast and that's just different than saying hey we're going to do a newscast right rather than saying we're going to do a newscast you uh you just say who can give the best newscast and it's like a different experience right so adding that healthy competition in let's see collaboration so once again bringing all the ideas and co-constructing knowledge amongst uh, the uh, the guests that come so it's although of course yes as the docents as the hosts we will have a lot of the information but definitely working with each other to teach one another. And also if there are guests that come in, maybe there's something that they have that can add to our pool of learning. Uh, that's something that we wanna think about as well. Moving to 12, uh, virtual escape rooms. Oh my goodness. Uh, I know I played Breakout EDU. The students uh, love this. I have to say for me, I'm not a huge fan of virtual escape rooms, but that doesn't mean a lot of other people aren't. And so um, I always try to think like, uh, how is it that other people like to learn and teach in that way, even if it's not my favorite mode as well. So you could create virtual uh, breakout rooms. And uh, the suggestion that was used was using Google Forms. Google, there is a way to use Google Forms to create virtual breakout rooms. Uh, another option is number 13, historical empathy. And I think this is gonna be very, very important as we study about Korean American history. Lots of, uh, you know, um, we wanna be empathetic as we as we study history, whether it's uh, the, the ancestral beginnings in Korea with the colonization of Korea, the Korean War, um, uh, or the migration experience or the racism that students, that um, uh, folks might've experienced uh, we want to have empathy, but at the same time, we want to really try to withhold that judgment, but we do want to stay emotionally connected. Tip number four, role-playing. Uh, role-playing, giving people uh, in your tour like a different kind of uh, job. 
So, um, so maybe in your tour, you, they're going to have different roles. Uh, I know in Zoom, you can change your name and they might have different roles. And in your virtual room, they might have a different role. Let's go to tip number 15, the creation of primary source materials. I know when we think about history, we think it's all uh, the past written and done, but it's actually a place of great discovery and exploration. And you can be creating actually new history. Uh, you know, uh, we talk regularly about being history scholars, but you are also history makers. So perhaps we're going to include oral histories in here. Perhaps we're going to document some history. Perhaps we're going to make some history and then add it to um, this virtual space, to this virtual museum. Uh, number 16, uh, virtual field trips. Maybe uh, there are some great locations that would be fun to go to uh, related to Korean American studies. So as we explore these different places, perhaps we're going to just kind of imagine that we're going to these uh, different locations. That'd be pretty awesome. Uh, I don't know if it's possible to get like Oculus or something, but maybe it could be like real, real virtual. I don't know. Uh, but uh, at the very least, we could just kind of pretend as we move from uh, Zoom room to Zoom room that we're actually in that very, like that different place. We're being transported from one place to another place. Wouldn't that make it so much more interesting to go to this museum? And especially if it's like a virtual museum, I think we can we can make that work, right? Uh, e, uh, tip number 17, um, you creating your own course. So just like, uh, you know, I'm creating this new Korean American studies course, I'm the teacher. But you're the teacher too, and you can be the teacher, and you can create your own courses. You know that we've been doing a lot of screencasts, but you could also do podcasts, YouTube's, Google Slides, and um, you know there's there's an opportunity for us to be the docents to have a live walkthrough through the virtual museum. But you know what? Um, the great thing about your experience is, uh, you know, you're gonna be like freshmen. You can become sophomores, sophomores, juniors, juniors, seniors, seniors graduate, and so we want to continue to see. Uh, and be and you can still continue to give the tour but maybe it's virtually like through a screencast and we'd love to have your stories continue to be there for others to continue to look at and your legacy to continue uh, your history making to continue through the sharing of your stories uh, through your e-course um, also uh, another tip is uh, debates um, you know, one thing that I love about our country is the opportunity to have conversations and civil discourse and to be a civil friend. And I know in our ethnic studies classes, my history classes, we talk a lot about being a civic friend. And a civic man, friend it includes having civil discourse, which includes actually listening very carefully as well. So we can create virtual space to either um, just have structured academic controversy where one person shares their opinion and the other person just listens carefully uh, and restates what was heard, or it could actually be um, a place for debate as well. Perhaps that's gonna be in our virtual museum. Uh, tip number 20 was a democracy lab. And so, you know, like why wait to live out democracy uh, when we're like 18 and above, or, you know, we can practice democracy like now as a young person. So you could have your own, for example, virtual youth town halls, your own virtual, virtual mock voting booths, um, your own virtual student leadership programs, or maybe this is the place where we're gonna do some of our civic action. Uh, in our course, we're gonna do a lot of community building. We're gonna definitely be elevating your voice so that you're able to talk about a speech that you care about, but also um, civic action. Uh, as you think about issues that you wanna tackle, what is a compassionate next step? So having a place where people have a chance to actually take action and grow democracy, foster democracy by uh, employing our civic skills, by using the skills that we've learned uh, to grow democracy in ourselves, in our community, and outside our community. And then lastly is a talk show. Now when I think talk show, sometimes um, there's some talk shows that I think really don't have the greatest civil discourse, but I'm thinking like a really like great kind of talk show where you're meeting an interesting person or talking about an issue, or perhaps this is going to be like the days of dialogue that we've done in the past, where we invite some folks to come and we talk about an issue in the past. We've talked about um, expectations related to um, academics. We could bring in like parents and students and community members and talk about these expectations in a dialogic and a civil manner. 
Uh, we've had I've had days of dialogue around uh, the surge in anti-Asian racism and giving space for uh, students to talk. And I've also had days of dialogue more recently uh, around the um, TikTok trend, devious licks, and uh, having opportunities for people to share their feelings and realizing that uh, by sharing our feelings and what we're thinking, uh, it's the minority of us that are really supporting that kind of trend. But when your voices are elevated, your kind voices, your compassionate voices, um, your good voices are elevated, it really is so powerful. And I think we're going to be developing that. We're going to be using all of our five C's for this museum, communication, collaboration, creativity, critical thinking, and compassion, uh, most importantly. And at the end of it, you're going to have this really special place, which will be kind of like your capstone, your showcase of what you've learned in this class. And it's going to be there for you and it's going to be there for others. So I'm really excited about this virtual museum. And I'm very appreciative of the Reagan Academy who shared these 20 tips because I mean, it gave me a lot of ideas and enhanced my ideas as well. So thank you very much, Reagan Academy. If this uh, video was helpful for you in thinking about ethnic studies or creating a virtual museum, go ahead and make sure you give it a thumbs up. If you like videos on ethnic studies and you're wanting to grow your program, uh, think about growing your program or start a program, make sure you subscribe. I have videos coming out very regularly on this topic, along with other topics, including uh, classroom management, project-based learning, grading for equity, civic engagement, learning, and more. Uh, this is Dr. Jeff from Ed Family, where we strive to help students find out what they're good at so that they can do good with it. Dr. Kim, once again, signing out.